gentlemen, boys and girls, what is going on? What is going on? It's your boy, your neighborhood Prince of Botch himself, your boy Dwayne. I'm in the building. Welcome to yet another episode of Life's a Botch featuring yours truly. You already know how we do. Shout out to everybody that's listening right now. I want to shout out the great people on Six Families Radio at sixfamiliesradio.com. Shout out to you if you're listening in your car, if you're listening at the gym, wherever you're listening. I thank you for tuning in with us right now. I thank you for my people on Tuned In. Speaking of Tuned In, shout out to y'all. Make sure uh, if you're listening, you know, make sure you hit that little heart up top. You know, uh, shout out to Six Families Radio, you know, so that way everybody can get connected on this Six Families Radio train. I would like to thank everybody that's listening. Uh, on the podcast broadcast. So if you're listening on things like Apple and Spotify, you know, we thank you and we ask that, you, you know, go ahead and subscribe. You know, there's a nice little subscription button, you know, go ahead and hit that, hit those five stars. Let us know how you feel, who you are, so we can shout you out on the show. But without further ado, to my returning listeners out there, welcome. It is great to have you back. And uh, as y'all know, I love to get guests on the show bring some guests here, and have a little fun, and uh, entertain my people out there. So this guest is a very, 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 very awesome individual, uh, melanin all over from head to toe, you know what I'm saying? And uh, man, just sending positive vibes all over the place, you know what I mean? Now, don't get it twisted, though, because <laughs> even though there's positive vibes that get sent all across, just know. If you cross paths with her in that there wrestling ring, in between that squared circle and those ropes, chances are it goes from positivity to going down real, real, real quick. You know what I'm saying? So I would like to introduce up and coming indie wrestler. She is your current reigning, defending Pan African world champion. Oh, oh, does she have the belt? Oh, I thought she was about to break the belt out for us real <laughs> it's, quick. It's I was gonna over say, there, oh. it's like it's situated, it's but I'll bring it over in a sec. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, you bring yours, I bring mine. You know, we got a belt right here on this resident show as okay. well. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yo. Okay. Champion the champion. You know what I'm saying? Show off some championships around here. Let them know this is Champion's Corner. This is the Champion's <laughs> episode, baby. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, um, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this woman is an up and coming. Uh, amazing talent and i'm just gonna let her tell her really a lot more about y'all so i'm just here to set up the alley-oop if you will for her to slam dunk it into this thing but ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i would like to introduce to you miss trish adora how you doing ma'am welcome to the show hey i'm doing good thank you that was a very nice intro that was <laughs> very thank you, nice thank you. <laughs> thank you i do try you know one thing that i love to do for my guests on the show especially when they're first timers give them an awesome introduction so that way not only the fans out there listening are really amped and excited but so that the talent is amped and excited you know got to do it like a ring announcer would do it when you're getting ready to come out you know give you that adrenaline and get ready to just be pumped you know what i'm saying so Thank you for, for coming on and joining. Uh, believe it or not, history fact, this is a historical fact, you, ma'am, are actually <laughs> the first, and I do mean the first, indie talent that I have as a guest on the show. Believe really? it or not. Yes, I have, I've actually had the pleasure of, of interviewing people from the indies, but not an actual in-ring indie talent just yet. You are the very first. Um, shout out to my boy, Brian Shaw. If my boy, Brian Shaw from, uh, you know, GCW is listening, he is from an indie promotion known as GCW, Alabama promotion, that is, because they have one here in Atlanta, Georgia. So I got to specify that and say the Alabama division, but nonetheless, my boy, Brian Shaw, salute to you and GCW. And uh, basically, I say that because, well, in his case, he came on as a referee. So, you know, he had to give the ref's perspective. But he's also a man who can do a little bit of everything, as we said. So if you're a first-time listener, make sure you go back and check out that episode with referee Brian Shaw. And I want to salute him again for listening. Nonetheless, you are the very first indie talent on the show. So welcome again and make awesome. it history, you know what I mean? Make it history. <laughs> the, the pressure's on now. See now, the the pre- <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all 
<laughs> Listen, it is all good. It is all good. You know, I, I was noticing too that that sunflower, the sunflower is 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 a thing. You know, it's almost like your tag. You know, when you when you when you communicate, and and so I thought to myself, I said, okay, well she. She, I watched, you know, a lot of, I was watching some of your matches and I watched like how your evolution and your look has been getting, right? Like how you've really been really just evolving in your look and like literally your presentation of like, okay, this is me. This is who I'm going to be. This is who I'm going to represent. And like, I was just like, huh. And a couple of nicknames came to mind that involved Sunflower because I, I, I peeped the promo that was cut on you and how they were like, I'm going to give you your roses. Nah, 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 nah. I'm going to give you your sunflowers. And I was like, hey, that was pretty creative, sir. I like how you did that. So I thought to myself, well, hey, what if you called her the soulful sunflower? You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody, every wrestler kind of has that, that nice little uh, nickname within their name. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, oh, it had a nice little ring to it. You know what I mean? Or even the melanated sunflower what however you wanted to look at it i don't know i'm a man of nicknames that come up with a mother fly so if any of those stick feel more than free to go ahead and run with those and just know your boy from life's botch Dwayne came up with that for you one, one time you know all, all good all good okay. but <laughs> let's 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 talk to the people and let's get to know trish adora let's talk about who is trish adora talk to the people for me yeah, so I was uh, born and raised in Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, that's where I'm currently based out of. Yes. Uh, I've been training for about four years now. I've been on the independent since September 2018. There we go. Ooh, so, <laughs> nice. Okay, okay. Actually. Wow. Um, yeah, a little bit before that, but the summer of. So, um, yeah, I moved down to Florida for about three or four years and I trained at the Team 3D Academy. Nice. So okay. yeah, training there was uh, pretty legit, pretty fun. Yeah. I moved back to DC a few years ago just to kind of try to reset and just kind of restart my independent career, so to speak. So nice. I call that a nice little restart. Um, yeah. Since then, uh, since coming back to D.C., I trained with Ring of Honor uh, extensively. Um, also, I traveled over to the U.K. and Japan. So there have been a lot of opportunities that have been afforded. So yes. pretty, uh, pretty excited with this uh, next half of my career and all the things that are going to be happening going forward. I'm pretty excited. Yes. That's awesome. And, and I mean, that's a lot. Um, only for a couple of years, because uh, to those who know, man, that just goes to show how much you've done in a short amount of time because 2018 to 2020, I mean, it's, that's not too far off as you can tell. And, and to have been all over like that really just signifies a lot about, you know, your grind and the grind of just the Indies in general, because I know uh, I've been getting educated through this show a lot more about the Indies because I know that for me, um, with a fan's perspective, because I've obviously never been in the ring. It was a dream at one point, but you know, I, I turned my dream into a different field and I was able to just take my charisma and just put it in the form of media. So I'm like, cool, you know, it, it, it works out. But like, I, I've learned a lot just in being able to interview people like yourself. And, and of course, you know, had the pleasure so far, of, you know, interviewing some legends in the game or people currently, you know, in, in, in these promotions that are in right now doing their things. So what what I love about the Indies uh, is just literally how you guys can put on a sh show anywhere, like anywhere. I right. mean, as I was going back and looking at some of your matches, I'm seeing like, you know, whether it was a gymnasium, a classroom, whether it was like anywhere, <laughs> you guys can set up shop, a backyard, a festival, mm. uh, a carnival, wherever, it doesn't matter. If, it, if it's got an open space and there's a crowd, set up that ring baby put those barricades up set those chairs out and boom you just you got your own personal arena right there ready to go and um i've always admired that i love how indie wrestlers do that and and then it's just such a you know like a thrill you know to do this and and just go back and forth and just continue to get your name out there and before you know it you're like a, a big deal out here, you know, amongst fans. And it's like, and people are just like literally bragging about you watching your matches on social media, which is now a big platform. So talk about, I mean, especially coming out of DC because uh, 
you know, uh, Team 3D Academy. I mean, to those who don't know, that, of course, is the very wrestling school of one of the greatest tag teams in the world of wrestling, known as the Deadly Boys. Shout out to the 3D, you know what I mean? Because obviously, you know, we already know when you're coming up under a tree of that nature, you're definitely going to get some knowledge. So uh, what was it like coming out of team, you know, team 3D Academy like that? What was that like? Uh, you know, it was, it was pretty great. Um, the basics are definitely something that is, uh, that are pretty harped on. And I think they're very important. Um, and just even outside of the ring, just learning basic etiquette and, you know, backstage and all that stuff that, you know, to not know you would feel disadvantaged, you know what I mean? And you kind of just learn on the fly and learn by your own mistakes. And it doesn't always have to happen that way. So thank I was schooled a lot on um, just conducting myself backstage, yeah. you know, how to interact with people, being able to just talk with people, and basics in the ring. So. Oh, man. And that's, and that's also what exactly, um, what, what, when I normally go with this route also, is what got you into the world of pro wrestling as well before you got to Team 3? Like, was it something you always watched? I know a lot of guests that I've had, um, have had the unique stories of like, you know what, I really wasn't much of a wrestling fan. I just happened to get into it somehow. Uh, but what, what's your story about that? Like, were you always in wrestling? What Was there a certain superstar you saw that you suddenly became a fan of wrestling? Or how did that work for you? Yeah, so I, um, I have five brothers. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we all grew up, me and like my dad and everybody would just kind of crowd around the TV and they would all just be watching wrestling. It was just kind of the tradition of the household. You know, if it was a Sunday night, we knew what was up. If it was a Monday night, you know, come Thursday, you know, it was just, we had our days set up and we just, I was so young. I didn't exactly understand what was going on. I just yeah. remember, you know, like the um, early WCW, the smoky ring. And then you yes. hear that sound of like the mat. It's like, that's so ingrained in my mind, just from like, seeing all of that and just the nitro girls it's just like <laughs> some, some, some super early memories that just stick out so so much and I just remember just wondering like what are they doing this is so interesting and just seeing my family get excited and I'm just like all right I'm excited too <laughs> you know so over time you know um I definitely liked watching all the women wrestlers you know mm -hmm. being an only girl and having five brothers you know you definitely want to feel like you can hold your own so yeah. for me seeing women even hold their own or even just be there in that arena doing those things I was just like oh that's so cool yeah. and then I messed around and saw Jacqueline and I was like oh well I mean, that's, <laughs> that's too easy I mean yes. I guess yes. I'm just gonna be a wrestler now <laughs> yeah facts Jack, Jacqueline was was look man that yeah. woman there. yes oh my yeah. gosh I oh, thought they were yes. just Yes. Just absolutely beautiful and just tough as nails. I love that combination. And yes. to just see black women, you know, in those spaces is such a white male dominated, you know, yeah. sport. Yes. And so to just see, you know, see black women, you know, just a few, but to see them yeah. thrive and get their flowers and everything like that. And to have yeah. jazz, you know, still out here wrestling. I'm like, look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had the pleasure of uh, coming across, I mean, being in the indie scene, have you met her yet or had a chance to uh, learn anything from her just yet? I know some I people, not yet. Well, in time, I know for sure you will because I I'm- Yeah, I know. Um, She might be doing like a couple of training gigs or something like that. I knew she had made a post, bring it up that uh, you can go to DDP yoga and stuff to like train and stuff like that. I'm just like, I'm gonna train with you. Where are we gonna go? <laughs> Where's the ring, Jack? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, Let's, um, you know, actually, while we're on that subject of just African-American, like, wrestlers in general, um, lately, man, just in general of, like, to this day, African-American representation in pro wrestling has been so great now, you know, uh, but let's, you know, just knowing that, as you mentioned, in the time when we came up, you know, with the WCW and WWE Monday Night Wars and everything like that at that time, uh, you had your Booker T's, you know, you had your Jacklins, you had your D'Lo Browns, Godfathers, and so many different, you know, and of course, The Rock, you know, everybody mentions The Rock and all kind of things. But like, you know, to see now uh, in, in today's 
present time to see how much African American wrestlers are actually out on the scene, both in the in the mainstream and in the indie scene. You know what I mean? Like to see how much black wrestling has actually evolved uh, from the years of its early stages. Like how important has that been to see uh, just how many, uh, like for example, like a Chris Bay uh, being an X division champion out there in Impact. You know, um, to see a guy like Kofi Kingston become your first African born WWE champion last year and how dope that was uh, for all of any African Americans in pro wrestling, no matter the level, just to see something like that and know like, okay, we can be up top like that. And to see uh, like the Street Profits, you know, as as your longest reigning raw tag team champions right now, you know, just all kind of things like that. How How is that feeling as an African American right now to just see, to see us shining out here like this and just, you know, showing that we can do what we can do and do a pretty, pretty doggone great. Yeah, it's it's awesome to see what happens when, you know, people are given the chance, you know, and, you know, when people take the brass, you know, yeah. brass ring and things like that. So it's it's good to see. It, it gives me all warm and fuzzy on the inside, you know. Yeah. Um, I I saw Jacqueline when I was younger, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that spurred something in me had I never yeah. saw her. I mean, maybe I'd be an accountant or something. I don't know, but... <laughs> Uh, who knows you know what i'm saying so if i could maybe be that for someone else like Mm -hmm. that's crazy that's cool if i could just change someone's path maybe or just show them that you know you can do it it's it's cool to see i love that there's so many like black wrestlers getting flowers right now and there's so many more and there's so much more work to be done so i want to show hopefully through example you know that there are so many more of us, and I always want to try to highlight my brothers and sisters, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. just not only just being Black, being like in the LGBT community and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So that intersectionality, you know, yeah. sometimes goes hand in hand. So it's always important for me to push those people to the forefront. Very yeah. important. I love seeing it. Nothing makes me happier. Nothing let's all get happy. paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like, let's, let's all get this and, and, and just win together. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I love it's, it. It's, it's dope to see, especially in the world of pro wrestling, because um, just with everything that had been going on recently and everything that we have seen just within this year, like to see still a lot of, you know, unity, a, a, a lot more work to be done. But of course, to see so much more unity going amongst, you know, like you said, all of our brothers and sisters and see what's going on. I, t- I tell people all the time how proud I actually was of pro wrestling for just, you know, unifying stronger than ever you know uh, even before we've seen what we've seen recently with the nba and the nfl and all these other leagues that are like coming together like you know wrestling was kind of doing that on the jump right off the top you know and and you saw wrestlers speaking their voices promotions were not shunning them not shaming them not saying okay we're not booking that person or this like no yeah you know what we're booking these people even more because you know we need this you know like bring that in um, how important and how impactful has that been for you to see uh, so much unity in the in the wrestling community as a whole? Ah, it feels great. Honestly, it just, it feels good because there was, okay, so I spent a, my first half of my career in Florida and that was mostly through training and I did a, a couple shows in the area mm-hmm. and I, I can't really speak to it right now. I'm not really in the area right now, obviously, mm-hmm. but I definitely felt that, you know, everybody was kind of on their own island and everybody was trying to figure their own crops out, you know, and things like that. And I think that just over time with just, especially with the way the world has been, you know, it's, I think it's been easier at least for people to just kind of look at each other and go, you're my brother. It was, it was always easy for me to say that, you know, I would say that to anybody so freely and to hear it back, you know, that people consider me a sister, you know, to people that I consider sisters, you know, to people that I consider brothers. Those are like my peers, you know, they're people that I care about. And wrestling brought this together. My beautiful black brothers and sisters. I think that's so dope. And with promotions too, like, um, like Fight Club here mm-hmm. local in DC, ran mm-hmm. by uh, Johnny Cross, a, a really good guy. We deployed together actually in 2012. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a really good, a good friend to me. And with him starting that promotion and with introducing the Pan-African World Diaspora, 
you know, championship. It was just another opportunity, another place for us to go. Yeah. And it was just, it, there should be more. <laughs> there should be more places. <laughs> there should be more fight clubs. There should be one in every state. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's supposed to always be a safe place for wrestlers to go. You know, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't feel that way all the mm. time. But I yeah. see now with more time going on, you know, you know, especially with how we're interacting online and things yeah. like that, I see it going way forward. Yeah. And I'm just, I just feel good. It makes me happy. It makes yeah. me happy. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. And um, again, even with uh, the current circumstances, it, it's, you know, doing stuff like on online, you know, it's, it's been a, a blessing to be able to do this and conduct it this way, uh, you know, with up and coming talents like yourself, because uh, I, I've tried to look more on the bright side of what this year has done and how I've been able to network and connect with, you know, talents where I do miss the live event experience. I do because I do miss, you know, being able to, you know, go, you know, find out about a local show and, and, and come see an indie talent. Because as I mentioned, I, I haven't really had an opportunity to go to a lot of indie shows. Uh, really, I've only probably been to one in my entire life, but it was something my high school did. That's how far back that really was at that time. And when I was coming up in high school, internet was around obviously, but it was kind of like in that DSL phase. So you didn't really have <laughs> complete access the way you have now where you can just instantly find out, you know, social media was around, but it wasn't as multiple as it is now where you can just like find out about shows. Like now, thanks to social media, I can find out like, oh, okay, there's an advertisement popping up for a big indie show that's in your nearby area. Okay, cool. You know what? I want to go support that and find out about that, you know, and I want to get to see who's up and coming, like see who's next up, you know, who's about to get on this rise. But I do respect the indies so much and I've always respected the indies because again, I think about that high school show that I went to where one of our football coaches uh, was actually one of the main events because he was going against Kamala and it was like a, you know, nice little big thing. And they had like Scott Steiner being there. Um, God, gosh, it was so many like legends and up and comers that were there. I can't even, I still, I, I, I hate, I lost that poster. I had that poster for so long where it had the list of names, but it was, it was a real big deal. And I just remember how awesome it was to come in and to see how they transformed it. They had like merch tables where you could get like, WWE stuff, you could get WCW stuff, you could get any and everything. It was like, whoa, this is cool. Then you have wrestlers, you go in and you see the wrestlers at their tables, you can take pictures, get autographs, and then they got ready for the big show. And that was my first and so far only indie experience, right? But I, I, I appreciated even that because as different as it was, I still loved it because I loved wrestling and I love wrestling. And so it was like, this is cool. So I, I'm praying that as, as you know, things get back to a slow norm, um, you know, it's good to see you guys definitely uh, doing shows again, you know, and, and because I know for a while wrestling seemed to be at a standstill where it was like, my gosh, like, right. what does this mean for us? You know what I mean? Like, we, we eat from this. Like, how are we going to, you know, do what we do? And now it's like, you know, I guess, I guess you could say Vince McMahon and the WWF kind of, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what, what guys would, you know, kind of say is the real reason behind what's currently been the trend of like doing shows with no fans now and just kind of saying, okay, yeah. we'll, we'll do empty arenas and then slowly transition to like maybe 15 to 20 fans in a show that's like spaced out, you know, and then eventually work our way back to those bigger shows, you know, uh, in time. But it's, it's cool to see that you guys are definitely – especially on the indie scenes, because you guys were the ones I definitely thought about the most. Like, man, uh, to come up, you know, have so much momentum from the time you started out and then this hits and it's like, you know, yeah. you know what happened. But it's also been a blessing in, 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 a, in a strange way, because I'm sure you guys have also had time to reflect and say, OK, what can I do different for my character? What can I do to change up my look a little bit maybe or you know so like what what have you done to take advantage of what corona was doing before shows started getting back to a you know a norm again yeah honestly i think it was a super transitional period for me mm -hmm. because 
Um, I just won the Pan African uh, title in February, mid February. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, just kind of riding high, just enjoying things. And I had a, a big WrestleMania season somewhat planned. Mm -hmm. And then with all of that getting skewed, the last, the last show I ended up working, I went to Hood Slam in California for my mm -hmm. birthday, March 13th. I was mm -hmm. supposed to wrestle and, you know, touch down and then <clears throat> everything just kind of ended up oh. like, yeah, we can't do anything. Yeah. But Oh, I still ended up, uh, actually, I ended up wrestling um, Steven Trezario, so nice. that's a okay. pretty dope match, actually. I had fun with it, and you know, we had fun with it, <laughs> yes. and it was really as frustrated as I wanted to be, mm. honestly. It was that night where I was like, I have to adapt. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was just, just adapting, and it's like a lesson you hear you know you hear it in training you gotta adapt you're like yeah okay let's just have a match you know and then it's like one day you're kind of put in that position you're like yeah I do have to adapt don't I yeah <laughs> so it was just kind of changing my mindset so I didn't get so like you know depressed or so like upset about things I couldn't control mm -hmm. so it was really more about changing my mindset how I felt about my career leading up to this point what I felt that missed out on and making yeah. sure that I could adapt moving forward mm -hmm. and just trying to generally just be happy with what I had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I, there's, there's a lot to be happy about, you know, no matter how bad it feels or how bad it gets or how sad, you know, that I couldn't wrestle and, you know, all yeah. these big ideas, new gear and all the glitter and the glam at the end of the day, if I could just sit still and be happy for what I've been able to do, and, you know, I hope that I have a very positive effect on others. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if so, then I would call that a win. And it wasn't until I was okay right there mm -hmm. that I could move forward and feel differently about, you know, about everything. And it was just, that night was just so, it was very transformative. Mm -hmm. It taught me how to adapt. And that is the most important lesson. You have to mentally adapt, emotionally adapt. You're physically adapting. But let's not forget that there's other layers to this too. So yeah. just trying to keep my mind clean, honestly. Got it. And that's, that's what you got to do. You got to keep it clean at all times because it's, you know, I mean, you just never know. Uh, we always got to be prepped for the unexpected. And that was definitely unexpected. I mean, I know a lot of people had a lot of plans, you know, for, okay, 2020, new year, let's do this thing. We're going to come hard. This is my year as we all say, right? And it's going to be interesting to see going into next year when people say, right. like, is next year my year? Uh, well, not it's my year, but... Is it the world's year? I don't know. After this year, I have no idea, guys. But, oh. you know, it's going to be interesting to see what this year... Uh, but again, I've, I've, I've loved and enjoyed, but I'm glad to see that, you know, uh, wrestling again is back on its feet. And, and you know, like yeah. I said, you guys are back on the grind. And uh, slowly but surely, you know, yeah. making that yeah. momentum come back. To, you know, so that's that's good to see. Uh, so let's talk about the fact that, uh, you know, in this time, between the time you won this Pan-African Championship, mm -hmm. you know, you, you had a title defense in there, you know what I mean? But yeah. now you get, you know, you had all this time this free time right. to, 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 you know, recuperate and, and get that energy flowing, you know, get that melanin shining, get that vibe going, you know what I'm saying? Get those sunflowers nice and ready yes. for this upcoming title defense that you have on August the 15th through Fight Club with your opponent, Mr. Timmy Lou Redden. So I would love to know, how are you feeling going into this match? Are you, are you amped? Are you excited? Are you chill? Are you kind of like, you know, you know what, what, what's going on through Miss Trisha Dora's mind getting ready for this title defense? I'm, I'm ready to rise. You know what? I just, I feel like I've been just sort of buried in a sense, not really in a traditional wrestling sense. I don't want to use that word like that. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, you know, that I feel just sort of awake sometimes. Yeah. And with me changing my mindset and with me, making a point to mm -hmm. just be more positive in a lot of ways. I yeah. feel like this match coming up is gonna be that cherry on top. I feel like that is when I will rise 
as from the ashes like a phoenix. You know yeah. what I mean? That's when my sunflower grows. That's when the light hits me just right. You know what I'm okay. saying? Yes. So yeah. I feel like this is very evolutional in a sense. I feel like it's very personal in a sense. You yes. know, I do feel I take all of my wrestling very seriously. I, mm-hmm. you know, they're my little babies. Yes. <laughs> Each of my matches are like my little babies, and I take yes. them all very, very seriously. And I understand how important this match is. You know, with all the talk about intergender wrestling Mm -hmm. and, you know, the whole beef with that that's been going on these past couple of days, you know, with everything going on with, you know, Black wrestlers, you know, and Naomi deserving more and everything like that. The time to just show and prove is just, Mm -hmm. it's now. I show and prove now and I do it through actions. I do Mm -hmm. it through words. I'll do it in every single way possible. You know, my piece is... It's so important to me. And I feel like I just didn't really have it until I won my title. <laughs> I feel like for some reason, like there's, there's just peace now. And I'm like, okay, I am the standard bear. It is me. I accept that. I know that. And Tammy Lee Retton thinks that is him. And I just have to let him know that it's not. It's not. So it's okay. not. So this is this is definitely sounding like a very interesting bout, you know, where one thing's for sure. Mm-hmm. The stars will align <laughs> and the universe will definitely be on you guys' side. So, by all means, it's safe to say, match of the night, no doubt about it, hands down, you already know what's coming. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that is always good to know, and 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 I'm looking forward to you know viewing this bout and and, and catching you know the highlights and catching everything that I can from it because I know you guys are gonna throw it down and just tear the whole house down you know as if everybody was there because we're all there in some form of spirit even with no yeah. crowd a crowd is still there you know what I'm saying <laughs> so right it'll I mean. it'll it'll stream to uh, IWTV oh sweet sweet yeah, so yes so. I'll be ready for that stream so nice and I, nice. Yes, that's gonna that's gonna be. I'm looking forward to this because uh, that promo definitely got me hyped. Like, oh, okay, oh, this yeah. is uh, that's gonna be interesting. Um, oh, so, yeah. I also would like to talk about my my experience. Um, you know, when I when I first came across you, you actually had a enhancement match, if you will, uh, mm-hmm. against uh, a superstar who is no longer, of course, with the company now, as she's recently departed and going back home to be with her husband in Japan. But I saw you, you know, an enhancement match for the first time with uh, on NXT with Miss Kyrie Sane. Yeah. And I, I thought to myself, now what was interesting was because I, I knew who Kyrie was. So then I see your <laughs> entrance first. And right. the first thing I see is I see just straight <laughs> tribal culture. And I'm like, okay, you come out fist up, ready to go. And I'm like, now, hold on. <laughs> now, I need to know more about this individual right here. Like, is this enough? This is an up and comer right here. Like, you, at that time, you really looked like you were already ready for a stage of like an NXT level, you know? And at that time to see that you're still in the indies grinding and even now and getting to know you, knowing that you've only been doing this thing since 2018. And so to see how quickly you're rising up the ranks and how you know hard you've been grinding. Uh, you know, what was that experience like? Uh, I guess a two-part question here with this one would be uh, from the experience of wrestling Kyrie saying and now knowing that she's no longer with the company and kind of, you know, going back to Japan to be with her husband and, and, and you know, uh, from what reports were saying also, it seems as if she's getting ready to retire soon. So, uh, as someone who's been in the ring with her, what are your, you know, thoughts uh, about, you know, Miss Kyrie saying? And then, of course, uh, what did that experience with NXT teach you uh, as you've been grinding going forth? Yeah, so honestly, Kyrie is very, very sweet, very kind. You know, mm-hmm. um, I had a great time working with her. She was just extremely chill, very, like, engaging. Uh, I was a little nervous going into it, honestly. I was like, oh, you know, it was kind of going to be my first time on a scale like that. So I was just kind of like, okay, your concern is just doing everything right. Yes. You know, yes. so 
I was just, she put me at ease, <laughs> you know, which I mean, the, the job of, you know, the person, if you're entering my world to, you know, have a match with me, I would like mm -hmm. to put you at ease, you know, and I would like the same for her, you know, I hope that I put her <laughs> at ease as well, because, you know, it was a very, it was her first uh, defense of her title. Yeah. So it was just, you know, it was just a lot of ease that needed to be transferred between the two of us. And I think yeah. we worked it out. She was very kind. You know, she had very nice words. Yeah. Very, uh, and she definitely bought the elbow down, definitely. <laughs> yes, yes. I was going to say, man, that was, a, that was a physical bout you two had for sure. Because yeah. um, yeah. even just off of your style, like you can tell that, you know, from your building, your style, you know, and, and a lot of that also plays into that, you know, that, U.S. veteran, you know, Army veteran kind of feel, you know, like you guys are always kind of just normally like built anyway for action. So you can tell like there's power in your style for sure. So like, you know, a girl of Kyrie's, you know, size, you know, sometimes we forget how small she is and like, you know, she can move though, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. to see how y'all styles clashed like that, you know, even for that to have just been a simple enhancement match, if you will, that still showed a lot about yourself while putting Kyrie over as the person at the time who was, you know, on top, you know, if you will, like you said, as, as the champion. So uh, it, it just showed uh, to me again, as a fan who is getting to know you for the first time through that, uh, that, okay, Kyrie got her, you know, got her shine there, but, yeah eyes on the talent that put her over because there's something about this young lady that is definitely going to be something for the future. So um, with future being said, you know, given the fact that 2020 did have its moment of stopping, you know, what have been Trisha Dora's, uh, what, are, what are your future goals and aspirations uh, in the wrestling business? Like, where do you, where would you, where do you see yourself or where would you like to see yourself land uh, given there's so many promotions out here from the Ring of Honors, the Impact Wrestlings, the New Japan Pro Wrestlings, the WWEs, you know, all of these really, really dope promotions out here. Uh, where would you see yourself wanting to land at least first, you know, to, to really say, I call this home and would love, they have so many talents, I would love to just get in the ring with and mix it up. Well, I do have a home in Fight Club. It's local okay. to the area I'm in. Um, mm -hmm. I am the champion there. I consider myself the standard bearer there. Uh, that is okay. my home. So okay. that is, it's, it's, you know, the allure of wanting, you know, those far reaching things, yes. if, you feel like there'll be a lot of steps. There's no problem with being comfortable where you are and taking yes. slower steps. Yes. It'll, it'll, I, I promise you, if you do that, you'll have a more peaceful journey, you know? Mm. So instead of me going, um, I need to be in WWE next year, I need to be in some, what I need to be more important than anything else is to be assured that I can continue to learn and grow. Training mm. is so important to me. Yes. <laughs> Training yes. is so important to me. You know, if there's like seminars, if there's, you know, places that could, you know, help out at, I would always be willing to go there. So um, I feel as though my home is with Fight Club, but mm. I'm, you know, somewhat of a, of a journeyman. I'll help out wherever I can. Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't think that that means that I will end up in a certain place, like physically. Mm. I think that so long as I end up being able to train loving what I do and loving how I do it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's important to, you know, I believe in the work that I do. Yes. So if I can keep feeling like that, then I'll win no matter where I am. This no time next way. year, if I still feel like that, I won. So. <laughs> hey, that's what I like to hear. That's, that's actually an amazing answer too. So I definitely want to say shout out to Fight Club in the DC area then because that's also something new for me to go check out even more because again one thing about the indies man is much like the music industry when you know you have your ones that you know in the mainstream but then you when you find out there's a whole another gazillion people in the indie world trying to get known it's like man you'll be all day trying to support and catch up with this person that person and that's how it is with the indies man it's like you, you want to see okay, who's, who's up next? You know what I mean? Because you know there's like crazy talent out there. 
uh, and then and you know that you guys are grinding constantly. So, you know, you want to follow those that you see on a regular, uh, such as yourself, you know, because again, you see them, you know, I think about uh, Big Swole, you know, and I think about how, yeah, you know, before landing with AEW, you know, she was everywhere, you know what I mean? You would see her everywhere. everywhere. You know, it was just like, you know, and, and you put the face to the name because you're like, you know, even if you don't know the name right off first, you know, you know the face and you match it. And then when you learn the name, now you know the name and the face and then you're everywhere. So it's 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 good to hear that. So, I, you know, I try to keep up with, you know, underground promotions, you know, the local promotions like that. Uh, should even being here in Atlanta, it's the same case where it's like, right. all right, which which indie promotions here can I like <laughs> keep up with? You know what I mean? Before I talk about some of the other states and cities, you know what I mean? But more than anything, just, you know, uh, in meeting and keeping tabs with talents like yourself, uh, as long as I have people like yourself to keep dibs with, interview, talk to, uh, as you continue to grow, have you on future episodes and things of that yeah. nature, that just goes to show, like, when I keep my tabs with, with, with people like yourself, Trust me, I'll be able to learn any and everything I need to know about any and everyone I go uh, and keeping that energy. Because one thing's for sure, Trish, your energy is definitely A1. And it's, oh. it's just dope to see how the characters switch. You know what I mean? Because again, as I said, you know, <laughs> when we see you in the ring, you would know all of this energy yeah. is shining on you the way it does. Okay. Because <laughs> in ring is a whole different story. You got a really aggressive style, man. I mean, you really know how to just take it to your opponent in all ways and shapes and forms. So it's, it's really dope to see uh, how you know energetic you are. And for sure, I know I'll be keeping tabs. I know my listeners out here will definitely keep tabs. So uh, real quick, go ahead and tell the people about your upcoming title defense. And again, you know, where to find you, follow you, where to stream you know this match this title this big bout that you got coming up that's gonna you know take over the world you know what i'm saying it's gonna take <laughs> over for the night you know uh go ahead and tell the people all about it and why they should check it out and and, and just everything yeah so on august 15th um it's gonna be the final you know the final drop of water you know what i mean it's when my stock finally grows it's when you finally see the fruits of all my labor you'll see what i've been working on this whole time you'll see what what i've been what i've been thinking about every single thing that has led me up to this point it just feels like our, my final countdown so to speak you know mm -hmm. and to have this match with timmy Luretten specifically it's just mm -hmm. it makes it even more symbolic and, you know, I understand how he feels. I, I've watched the promo over and over and over, and he feels so strongly. And I, I have to let him know that I do, too. And I'm more than ready to bring it. I've always been ready to bring it. And I don't fear anybody. And I'm always ready to go. Yeah. Always ready to go. Always ready. This Friday, no different. No different. That's, and that's what I like to hear. So you heard it here fo first, people, right here on the Life's a Botch podcast already know timothy lou redden the response has been given trisha Dora has heard your words she's heard what you have to say and trust you me she will be ready for what you bring into that ring see what i did there people that's what we do <laughs> and that's what you call hyping up a title bout none like any other so again miss <laughs> trisha Dora, we thank you so so much for coming on to the show today uh getting to know you getting to know who you are. And of course, it sounds like she's grabbing her championship. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that, <laughs> oh. I, was I wanted to, just before you finished, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, no, you're good. Go right ahead. Listen, this is a promise. We did promise yeah. to do this. Let's, yeah. Look at this. Look at this beautiful championship, people. Do you see this? Do you see this? Oh my gosh, yo, this is the most gorgeous championship I have ever seen in my natural born life. Do you guys see this right now? Oh, do you feel the culture on this championship? My goodness, my goodness, this, this is making my producer proud. Oh my gosh, my producer is smiling. Lord Jesus. Oh man. Listen, so uh, oh. it is such a beautiful championship. Listen, I'm smiling so hard. <laughs> I would, too. you know, 
and the funny thing is, I, I I can't I can't even lie, man. You know, this is just a beautiful thing to see championship gold on black people. You know what I'm saying? Because listen, I mean, what they don't understand here about the life's box championship. You see what I'm saying? This is for all my people hey, so, out here yeah. who are out here repping and okay. understand the fact that life is a botch at times because you go mess up, okay? You go mess up. But when you try, <laughs> the fact that you tried in your mess up, that you learn from your mess up, that you made laughs out of your mess ups and mistakes, and you able to make it even stronger from there to where you a champion out of it, baby, you become the very champion that this guy is right here. Life's a bot. So champion, the champion, I must say, this right here is a champion's salute to you, Miss Trisha Dore, because this is a beautiful, beautiful occasion. Yes. And on that note, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you too are a champion. You too can be a champion. You too have what it takes to win championships all times. Make sure your mind has the mind of a champion. Your heart has the heart of a champion. And you too will hoist one of these on your shoulders. I guarantee you that. And that are wise words from the Prince of Botch himself on the Life's of Botch podcast. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to sign this thing out. But before we do, Miss Trisha Dora, will you please tell the good people where they can find you and follow your come up on social media. Yes. So I'm at Trish Adora 202 and that's on Instagram and Twitter. I do have an athletes page on Facebook. That's mm -hmm. around the way girl. So. Around the way girl. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, definitely going to make sure we're following all of those platforms. You already know where to find your boy, but just in case you're a new listener and you don't, well, it's simple. Follow the Prince of Botch at the Life's a Botch podcast. That's right, Life's a Botch podcast. We got a Facebook group on Facebook you can follow. The Life's a Botch podcast Facebook group where we kind of talk about, you know, big matches such as Trisha Dora's upcoming title match where we get to talk about scenarios and all kind of things. You just never know. You know what I mean? And, of course, I can't forget, I got a shout out the very network that makes this very show possible in OTS. That's right, OTS stands for On the Sidelines. Catch all things OTS at OTSguys.com where you can find this awesome show, another awesome show by the name of Pass the Ox, and shows such as Time Out, Debate Fuel, Sideline Guys. If you like music, sports, wrestling, sneakers fashion all kind of things like that well guess what you can find them right here on this very network at otsguys.com that being said ladies and gentlemen these champions are signing out and you have officially been botched peace